Hi everybody, welcome to this CUBE conversation. I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. We're going to talk about software-defined storage at petabyte scale. Stu, we've got some news coming out of HP. What, uh, what's the news? Sure, Dave. So, uh, HP Server Group is making announcements with a few partners uh, to go after uh, really the capacity side of the market. We've talked a lot about the flash and performance side of the market, but really looking at uh, big capacity, and the one we're going to talk about today is Scality, uh, who has been a partner with HP before. Uh, uh, they've got over 50 petabytes of uh, shared partners uh, solutions out there, uh, but uh, formalizing uh, really uh, the relationship that you can buy HP servers, have the Scality software on it, uh, to, to enable really that capacity tier. So Scality is kind of an interesting company. Uh, engineering in France, uh, but offices in, in Silicon Valley. Uh, what do you know about Scality? Yeah, Dave, as you said, uh, we, we talked to uh, the CEO, Jerome Lacotte, uh, who uh, built the company out, has uh, really the headquarters is in, in the Valley in San Francisco there. Um, engineering uh, is uh, in, in Paris. Uh, started out, most of us knew them as an object company, um, and has really matured the company uh, to go after really the software-defined storage market, uh, looking at uh, enabling uh, file systems and object stores uh, to be able to build uh, you know large scalable environments um, to, to hit uh, you know uh, specific workloads, uh, uh, not uh, going beyond just archiving, uh, but other applications, uh, some big data use cases, uh, and other environments where really we want to change the economics of uh, capacity storage. So, Stu, why is HP making this move? HP's a big company; they got a storage division. Um, you know, we've covered that extensively. <laughs> What's HP's angle? Yeah, yeah, great, great question, Dave. Because you look at it, of course, HP is the leader in servers, uh, and of course, the server group just sees an opportunity here, something that uh, you know complements what they're doing already. Uh, we've written it at, at Wikibon before about HP servers going into some big data environments for large uh, capacity environments on the server, and Scality software. Uh, allows HP servers to be able to build not just you know single nodes that are controlled by some application, but uh, build a uh, you know a, a a storage environment that scales uh, beyond single nodes out to a, a large pool of data. Uh, fits uh, very closely in with what we call the server SAN architecture. Okay, so we want to talk about that in a minute. But just to clarify the sort of overlap with HP's storage line. So HP's got the their 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 file base or NAS product out of iBricks. Uh, they've got uh, a, a VSA, a, a virtual st storage array. Yeah. How do they fit with this announcement? Yeah, so, so there, there definitely are some places where it would uh, c compete, Dave. So absolutely, the scale-out NAS iBrick solution out there. HP does have an object store that you don't hear too much about. Uh, so uh, you know, these are solutions where HP can sell a lot more servers uh, and uh, d deliver a storage solution uh, that, that customers have been asking them for. Okay, let's talk about the market. You mentioned service and uh, let's let's go to the root of this, which I like to think of as the hyperscale market. It's something that we've talked about and written about and 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 had a number of folks on the cube discussing this. Many people in the industry are talking about it as well. Uh, but essentially you've got, you know, the the birth of of Amazon, Google, Facebook now seeping into the enterprise. Uh, you've certainly got, you know, hardware standards emerging out of out of places like like Facebook, but you're seeing now enterprise customers demanding uh, to operate at Facebook-like, Google-like, Amazon-like efficiencies. So would you agree that this is really the, the, the trend for what we call service and that we'll talk about in a moment is really stemming from what was going on in hyperscale, let's say, three to five years ago. Yeah, Dave, Dave absolutely, as you said, it was the uh, the, the huge data center guys uh, couldn't build off of a, t a traditional uh, storage array, or even the filers got really expensive. Uh, many of us in the storage industry me remember back when, when you hear of uh, the Facebooks and Yahoos of the world, you know, adding filers, and as we tr tried to add a lot of photos, which was uh, big in the social media space, it just got uh, onerous to be able to scale that, and, and uh, the, the capacity of that was uh, quite difficult, so uh, you have to have a, a new uh, design criteria to be able to build out massive scale, uh, and uh, a solution like what Scality is offering allows me to buy a lot of compute nodes and scale up my storage internally, uh, and manage with that software paradigm rather than uh, having to buy, uh, you know, filers uh, separate from the server and uh, build those out and manage those. I, I hear you quote all the time, Dave. You say, you know, my first couple of uh, filers are easy to manage. Once I get more than ten, uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So. 
in thinking about the, sort of the evolution of st storage and how we got to the, s the SAN and, and network storage, you know, well not just SAN but, but NAS as well, but it's network storage, and an area that you know a lot about, but you, know, you used to have big boxes that you connect and they would maybe support multiple servers and then the, s the, the, the SAN switches came in, the, we saw the ascendancy of companies like Brocade and many of you might remember McData and then the SAN market emerged and exploded. And the promise of SAN was the ability to share that data across you know, multiple systems and also replicate the data and then a bunch of services grew out of that. Enormous business, it's, it's probably, if you include all the, I mean the, the hardware itself is probably 30 to 35 billion, the, the software is another 10 to 15 billion on top of that, so it's about a 50 billion dollar business and then a whole set of services grew around that. I mean, we're, we gotta be approaching, I would think, anywhere from 80 to 100 billion dollars of of market value that we, or revenue that was created. The market value is obviously some multiple of that. That's potentially going to get disrupted by what we call server SAN, is it not? Uh, and then, so tell us what server SAN is and then we can maybe dig into some of the numbers. Sure, Dave, and right, if you talk about, right, those giant arrays that got built to allow me to get greater utility out of all of the components, uh, because what was the most expensive part of the system and where were the bottlenecks in the system? So you had these, you know, monolithic storage devices that I could attach through a large network, and if we look at where it is today, look at those storage arrays and look at, all of the components in the data center, they're all built off of x86 hardware. So as Moore's law keeps allowing more compute cycles to be used uh, and the costs keep driving down, you know, doesn't make sense for us to re-architect uh, things. So as, as uh, we've talked about for Flash especially, uh, makes a lot of sense to have my, my storage and compute close. Uh, but even for a capacity play like what we're talking here uh, with the HP Scality solution, if I can pull, th if I have room in an architecture that allows me to build off of uh, the, the compute uh, with a lot of disk, uh, I, I can now build uh, a architecture that has better price points uh, and much better capacities in uh, side of a rack that, m that is built off of the standard x86 nodes than I could if I wanted to build an external storage array. So I mean, I, we've talked about this, Stu, and certainly David Floyer as well, uh, our CTO. The notion of flash plays in here and the idea that you can have a persistent medium closer to the processor, proximate to the processor, Gene Amdahl's famous quote of the best I.O. is, is no I.O. So the, the closer you can move a persistent medium to the, the CPU, the, the better performance can be. The, of course the challenge is always how do, you, how do you protect, how do you share, how do you create high availability, uh, but that problem is increasingly being attacked, is it not? Yeah, it is, but if, if we look at the, the challenge, Dave, it's not everything is a performance basis. There is also the capacity need. Uh, if you look at Amazon, they have performance and capacity plays. You've got S3, you've got EBS. Uh, if you look at service providers, often they are buying a uh, performance tier. Uh, we've looked at uh, SolidFire as one that's providing an all-flash array to give service providers an all-flash tier, and they also will need to have a large capacity environment that might be an object or scale-out NAS uh, so solution to be able to build that capacity tier. So we're really seeing that it kind of two-tiered model building out in the biggest environments and driving down to the enterprise where customers are going to uh, potentially build those solutions, uh, whether it be a, a flash solution for your performance and a capacity solution for the rest of what you're doing. So, uh, okay, so I, I, li I kind of like that scenario. You got the, the, the high performance data, the metadata running in flash, maybe a lot of block storage ru running in flash, and then you got the bit bucket. And that bit, bu bit bucket, I could even see a third category of sort of long-term retention, almost uh, almost like an Amazon glacier. Um, and, and but that the latter two are moving toward object, are, are, are they not? I mean, a kind of a get and put model. Yeah. So, so Dave, the the funny thing is, if you talk to everybody in the storage world, uh, it, we all say. If we look at where storage will be in the future, it's going to be object. That's where the cloud guys are going, that's where it has to go. But we've got this big air gap because all the applications today are written for either block or file, so we need to be able to port that over. And that's what Scality matured with their solution. They do have the file offering to be able to uh, give my uh, application that, that file interface uh, to be able to take advantage of the architecture. So Stu, at, at Wikibon, as you know, we like to look at disruption. And so we've got some data on the 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 server SAN market that uh, I wonder if we can pull up here, Andrew. So if you take a look at this forecast, it's the traditional enterprise storage, the hyperscale server SAN, and the enterprise server SAN. On the left hand side, you've got dollars, and as I said, the today that red that that SAN market's around 30 billion, uh, just above 30 billion uh, of, and that includes SAN and, and NAS. 
Uh, and then the blue area is this enterprise server sand, and then the green area is the hyperscale. So, so Stu, you can see this, <laughs> this huge hump that now, of course, it looks dramatic, but that hump really doesn't start declining until sort of a few years out here, 2016, 2017, and then dramatic decline. So you and David you know, devised this forecast, and you show huge CAGR for the blue area, the enterprise server sand, and of course the, the green. Now, now, describe the blue and the green. What are those two segments? Sure, Dave. So, so the green is, is really the hyperscale environment. So these are you, you, you know, Google, Facebooks, uh, Amazons of the world that, that are uh, you know, buying uh, the discrete components, uh, building a single application to go on that environment, as opposed to the blue is the typical enterprise that are going to buy solutions uh, from companies that are building, uh, sometimes they're called hyperconverge, what we call server SAN, uh, or you know, really the software-defined storage solutions where it's a compute-based, highly scalable architecture, that, that scale-out architecture, uh, which this HP Scality uh, environment would and fit and under. And some of that blue could seep into the green, could it not? I mean, maybe we see that green accelerate, I mean, there's a, there's a gray line, no pun intended, between the blue and the green, well, is there not? Yeah, I mean, usually we say the green are kind of those, you know, 10 biggest uh, web companies out there as opposed to uh, the service providers or everything underneath that and the enterprise uh, also is is big piece. So, uh, you know, absolutely there'll be a little bit of blurring as to, you know, who fits into those biggest of the bigs, uh, but, th you know, the blues are the ones that are going to build, uh, build off of solutions and uh, there's some building block solutions out there that could blur that line definitely over time. Look at where open computes coming out, uh, it could definitely uh, blur those lines. Yeah, so now let's, let's take the customer perspective, Stu. If I've got you know, billions of dollars, you know, okay, or my company, I got millions of dollars invested, but the market certainly has tens of billions, hundreds of billions of e even of, of process and, and people built up around the traditional SAN and, and NAS world. What do you do with that? How do you get from point A to point B? Am I looking at a rip and replace? Am I looking at massive disruption? Is it more of a workload-based kind of model? Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, D Dave, I think mostly it is workload-based, as you say, and uh, it, it tends to be uh, customers that aren't being solved with their traditional NAS solutions today are kind of the easiest ones to pick off here and, and say that just the economics of adding new filers and how I manage that whole solution and grow onto it uh, becomes onerous. And if you just look at uh, some of the offerings that I could buy today instead, it, it's going to be a pretty clear uh, re return on investment for putting in some new architectures. I mean, you know, you we spent a lot of time in Silicon Valley and, you know, the real buzz there is around the cloudification or the SaaSification of business and you're seeing it everywhere. Certainly companies are, are, are moving toward, you know, the SaaS model and you see that with the likes of, of the Workdays and the, and the ServiceNows and the, and the Salesforces, but companies on-premise are also trying to replicate that. Um, so, is is this the, in your view, the, the storage architecture of the future? I mean, you know, the forecast that you have there is pretty aggressive. Um, it's more than a niche, uh, according to your numbers. Yeah, Dave, as it's funny you, you mentioned the uh, hashtag we're actually using for the crowd chat is future of storage. So uh, we think that if object is where the, the ball, we, we, where we need to go to, if it's where we're skating to the puck, uh, it's solutions like this that are going to help uh, uh, now uh, enable file access to that object store and allow me to build that scale out architectures. Uh, I mean, Dave, the future's all about distributed systems uh, and new software solutions that can help leverage, uh, you know, standard, uh, products like x86 servers from HP uh, and build a software layer on top to enable those new distributed architectures are where uh, they need to move to. So we're talking scale out, I mean storage is scale out, systems are scaling out, network hopefully someday will <laughs> scale out, so the network's always dragging us down here, Stu, you know? <laughs> There's people working hard to solve that problem, Dave. <laughs> right, but, um, but in thinking about that uh, and, and that sort of distributed you know, network in environment, from a, from a customer standpoint, um, What's the business case here? We've had people on, from an object perspective, that have talked about you know, managing very large objects, whether it's you know, files or a video or pictures in one case, where they cut their cost literally by two thirds. So one, th one third of their initial SAN and NAS costs is what, 
what the, the new implementation was. I, is that what people can expect going forward? Yeah, David, it's just got to be the, the, the cost, you know, d dollar per gigabyte's got to go down, and how I manage that entire environment has to change. The, 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 the Achilles heel, really, for the SAN is that I spend way too much dollars to be able to implement that solution and keep it up and running. Uh, so I need to have a solution, if this is a true scale-out capacity play, that really mostly manages itself once I've put it up and running. I, I shouldn't need to be sitting here uh, optimizing a bespoke infrastructure, it needs to be uh, an infrastructure that adds pretty simply and manages uh, w with a lot of ease. So thank you, Stu. It looks like the future is x86. It's uh, moving stuff closer to that processor, uh, what we call server SAN, um, um, distributed environments, scale out. So great perspectives, really appreciate you coming on. Thanks, Dave. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. This is theCUBE, CUBE Conversations. We'll see you next time.